There's nothing like a crisis to let you know where you stand. When things are going fine, everyone tends to tolerate each other and to get along. But when we're put in the pressure cooker of an emergency, people start to disregard those tendencies pretty quick. C.S. Lewis said that suffering is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world and a crisis will tend to produce suffering. So as we seem to be moving from one crisis to another lately, an obvious question for me might be, are we listening to what God is trying to say to us? Something that has been really eye-opening for me lately is how precarious it can be for, for good people, people of good will who, who hold and adhere to traditional beliefs, uh, who are made to submit to progressive moral creeds that violate their own beliefs in the workplace, from, from DEI policies to gender theory to policies that tend to favor people who are not married and not raising the next generation to... I actually just saw one of the local unions where I live tweet out support for terrorists in the Middle East who had just committed genocidal acts on non-combatants and women and children because of their support for decolonization. And over the past few years, I've watched people that I care about lose their jobs, their homes, and their good name because of the way that society treats people with Catholic views or just people with a discerning, uh, critical conscience. And as a member of their community, I felt helpless to to do anything about it because we aren't mobilized as a community to respond in a collective way, which is kind of needed in a scenario like that. And I, I often watch with envy minorities because they are great at this kind of thing. You see them mitigating these kinds of vulnerabilities because they recognize that as minorities, they are vulnerable. But Catholics, we almost seem to take pride in being as exposed to the world as possible. Or perhaps it's because we're the largest religion in the world, so we don't think that we need to protect our community. While the fact is, especially for faithful Catholics, we are a minority. And if we want to ensure the vitality and the strength of our communities, we need to be more deliberate about adopting measures that will actually strengthen them. What the current trends in our culture and our professional sphere have taught me is that our indifference and our lack of action on something that the popes have been calling for for generations, for a long time now, it has consequences, and those consequences are starting to pronounce themselves in much more dramatic fashion in times like what we have been living through more recently. And forgive me, I know this all sounds a bit political. I know some Catholics think that the church has nothing to say about politics, but I think this betrays a misunderstanding of what politics is, as well as what the the church's social teachings are. Politics attempts to define the best way for people to organize themselves into community and then create laws that will help protect and nurture that community, which raises profound moral questions. Politics takes the ethical questions that are relevant to an individual and then it scales them up to a community. And because the church has plenty to say about how we as individuals are to conduct ourselves, she also has plenty to say about how communities should organize themselves as the same ethical principles can be scaled up and applied to society. And exactly what the church says about how we should organize ourselves in community isn't ambiguous. The church has been contributing to this tradition of thought since the beginning of its inception, and more recently in what has become known as the church's social teachings. So we as Catholics can't just opt out of the political conversations or act like it's in poor taste or it's taboo. Justice is a virtue that every individual Catholic is called to understand and then to aim for in our personal lives, and then to apply it to our civic participation. So with that said, what I wanna talk about today requires a bit of a historical sketch that informs our current situation. So. Prior to the age of revolutions that swept through Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries, which were violently anti-Catholic, by the way, your average working person lived in a community life that was layered with supports and protections. Now, do not, don't get me wrong here. I'm not trying to say that feudal Europe didn't have its problems because it obviously did, but it was designed in theory to promote local governance and to protect people from the abuses of large and remote authorities, which are a essential principles of Catholic social doctrine. For example, a common complaint of the modern world is that poor people always get sent to fight wars that rich people declare on other rich people. And that's true. The Prime Minister of Canada, who lives and governs thousands of miles away from me and my concerns, could get entangled in a conflict and directly order me, as remote as I am from him, to pick up a gun and kill his enemies. 
That's insane. But in medieval Europe, if the ruling class declared war, it was the same ruling class who had to go and fight that war. It would be Putin and Zelensky and their entourage on the vanguard fighting not the working poor conscripts that currently are. The working class were the working class in medieval Europe. And if the king of France tried to like send them to war, a local lord or baron was expected to step in and protect their rights. Working class people had strong bonds of family, village, they had professional guilds, the church, and the local lords that all owed them some kind of a commitment so that it was really hard for like an all-powerful state or something like a modern corporation to exploit them for their own purposes. But those revolutions that I alluded to earlier and, and powerful leaders like Napoleon swept all of that away so that each individual citizen was exposed to the will of an all-powerful ruler like Napoleon who didn't know or care about their local context or concerns. And that's how Napoleon was able to arm himself with his, his grand army. Um, he did something that the rest of Christian Europe considered tyrannical and exploitative. He put a gun in the hands of every citizen, whether they were trained to fight or not, and ordered them to go fight his wars of aggression. And without that kind of precedent, Germany never could have dreamed of doing what it did in the 20th century. French revolutionaries also abolished guilds and workers associations, which had prior to that provided a collective voice for the working class, which left the average working person utterly exposed to the whims of the rich and the powerful, which they then subsequently used to their benefit on a horrific scale during the Industrial Revolution. And it was this overthrow of a political system that at least in theory was designed to promote the common good and protect the weak from the powerful that inspired the popes of the modern era to decry the conditions of the working people and to promote solutions to the problems that were created by this new state of affairs, starting with encyclicals like Rerum Novarum by Pope Leo XIII. And one of the things that they called for was new workers' associations to reintroduce those layers of support and formation and protection for the working class that had been lost. And for the longest time, most people uh, they turned their hope towards trade unions. But the problem with attempts to speak with a collective voice is that in order to speak collectively in the service of the common good, you have to have some kind of collective vision of what is good. And as Western culture has drifted away from its Christian roots, it's lost that collective vision. And without some kind of guiding principle like the Christian creed, Unions, I would say out of necessity, have turned to other ideologies to galvanize their efforts, which is why they can be so blinded by Marx's talking points about colonialism that they can find themselves celebrating the vicious and inhuman actions of terrorists like Hamas. What we need is a way for working professionals to build their community, to support one another, and to have a common vision for what is true and good as articulated by Holy Mother Church. Now that's a big ask and it's not easily answered, but I announced something a little over a week ago that I've been working on for a long time called Fisher's Network that is one kind of a response to this need. And I promised to say a little bit more about it, but I wanted to set it in this context first so that we had an understanding of why this is so important. So the vision for this initiative is that we identify all the professional and economic leaders in a local Catholic community, something like a parish region, and we encourage them to, to get mobilized into professional groups dedicated to supporting each other as Catholic professionals. So find the Catholic business owners, the executives, politicians, uh, education leaders, nonprofit leaders, independent artists and writers, and then form them into what we're calling crews, dedicated to forming friendships, mentoring one another, uh, growing in their understanding of the faith, collaborating professionally wherever possible, and, and helping each other flourish and succeed in their professional enterprises. And ideally, parishes and especially pastors would support and host these crews and then join in with them so that they can be highly connected to people with the kinds of skills and expertise that I think would be obviously beneficial to a parish. So for example, if the parish has like a construction project or a construction need, it would make a lot more sense for them to hire a Catholic owned company from within their Fisher's Network crew rather than just rolling the dice with a Google search. Or if the pastor's having like an HR issue, there are likely people in his crew who can give him advice. And as he meets with members of his crew, he will also benefit from just a general business mentorship experience from highly qualified experts 
and, and a training that he didn't get in his seminary. Just think about the reciprocal good they could provide to each other and the parish if they all knew each other and were in the habit of helping and nurturing each other. And then once those Catholic leaders are are better established professionally, financially, economically, then they will be better equipped to respond to the needs of their community. So that's just like the broad vision of it, but the specifics of how this works is through a networking formula that we've developed where crews meet on something like a, a monthly basis following materials and agendas that we've created for them. And then they also meet one-on-one -on -one regularly in order to really get to know each other and to better understand each other's personal, spiritual, and especially their professional situation. Crews are led by crew captains, who is usually the person who started the crew and who's responsible for recruiting, uh, evaluating applicants, and uh, chairing meetings. To facilitate all of this, we've developed a custom app that manages all the scheduling and provides tools like referrals and social posting to help you grow and flourish as a crew. The app also features something called the Crew Journey, which is this formation curriculum that invites you to explore resources that focus on a variety of themes designed to promote your spiritual and professional virtues. So. If you feel this same need to respond to the difficulties that Catholics and frankly most people are facing in the 21st century, and if you're in the position to respond to this invitation, consider being a part of this solution. We're opening our doors officially today on our website, which you can find at fishersnetwork.com. So if you're a pastor, consider how this could help revolutionize your parish community and provide supports that most churches can only wish for. If you're a Catholic business owner or a business leader, consider the benefit of knowing who all the other professional leaders are in your area, in your parish community, and deliberately networking with them in friendship and mutual collaboration. And then just consider how this can prepare us for whatever adversities might be coming next. Consider how much more equipped we will be to respond to the needs of our communities if we have a crew of experts and leaders like this supporting each other and their community. 